Ibuprofen is a common over-the-counter medication that a lot of patients are going to be using to treat moderate pain uh, to, in different inflammatory states. Trade names are Advil and Motrin. So you've definitely seen this medication. You can just walk into any pharmacy, any grocery store, any gas station and buy ibuprofen. Let's talk about what it does and what the indications are for it. First of all, ibuprofen is an antipyretic, antirheumatic, non-opioid analgesic, and an NSAID. What does NSAID mean? It means non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent. So N-S-A-I-D, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So the reason we give these medications is they actually help to decrease pain and inflammation by inhibiting prostaglandins. So what we have in our bodies, we have these prostaglandins. Whenever um, you know we get injured, whenever something happens, we release these pl- prostaglandins. And this will raise our temperature. This is going to uh, make us feel pain. And so what NSAIDs do, ibuprofen, for example, what it does is it goes and it inhibits prostaglandin synthesis. And this is going to help prevent us from feeling pain. It's going to help bring down our fever. And its pharmacologic class is non-opioid analgesic. So it can be used in conjunction with other opioids and and things to help to treat pain. It can also be used in place of for mild pain. There are some really important things to keep in mind here. One of the biggest things to keep in mind is this can cause GI bleeding. So we want to monitor our patients, monitor for any signs of bleeding, any bloody stool or anything like that that would be a sign of a GI bleed. It can also cause hepatitis and Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Some patients will develop anaphylactic reactions to ibuprofen. So you want to ask your patient, have they ever had any sort of reaction to this? Uh, have they ever had any skin rash or anything happen after taking ibuprofen? And be careful that we don't give it if, if that is the case. We want to monitor for headache, nausea, vomiting, constipation. And patients that are taking ibuprofen should avoid using any alcohol while they're taking it. It can cause a disulfram-like reaction if they take it with uh, ibuprofen. One thing that this can be used for as well is You know, pediatric patients can develop Reyes syndrome if they take Tylenol, if they take too much Tylenol uh, or Tylenol for a viral uh, reaction. So what can be done here is you can, parents can alternate ibuprofen and Tylenol uh, for for babies, and that helps to limit how much Tylenol the baby actually gets. And so you could give a dose of ibuprofen, wait a few hours, give Tylenol, dose of ibuprofen, and and alternate it like that to make sure the baby isn't getting more Tylenol than what they should. So this is a very common medication. It's something you really do need to know just because so many people take it and we don't really understand it, I don't think. I, I don't think, you know, the lay person, the non-medical person is going to understand some of the indications with this GI bleeding, the need to avoid alcohol, and then just understanding how it works, you know, inhibiting prostaglandins. So that is ibuprofen and that's what you need to know. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to nrsng.com slash 50 meds. That's nrsng.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at nrsng.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.